This video is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Beginning in 2009, Russia began to enact significant reform to streamline, professionalize, and reorganize its armed forces. Although a relatively small part of the overall measures, Russia's motor rifle companies received slightly modified organizations with moderate downsizing and simplification. In this video, we're going to cover the organization of Russia's Motostrelki motorized and mechanized infantry companies, the units they're part of, and how they'd be used in a conventional attack, the defense, and on the march. First, let's give you some context of the units that motor rifle companies are a part of. Motor rifle companies are the primary close combat element of the motor rifle battalion. In addition to their three companies, each battalion has a mortar battery, an automatic grenade launcher platoon, an anti-tank platoon, a reconnaissance platoon, a communication platoon, an engineering platoon, a materials support platoon, and a medical platoon. However, battalions mounted in BMP infantry fighting vehicles don't have manned portable anti-tank platoons because BMPs themselves already have an anti-tank guided missile capability. When deployed, battalions usually form the basis of a battalion tactical group. They're essentially ad hoc reinforced combined arms units formed around one maneuver battalion and sometimes reinforced by one supporting maneuver company from the opposite arm and a variety of fires and combat support units attached from the brigade level. For example, a battalion tactical group could consist of a motor rifle battalion, reinforced by a tank company, an artillery battalion, an intelligence company, a UAV crew, an air defense man pads platoon, and an electronic warfare platoon. It would come under the overall command of the motor rifle battalion commander, but the exact composition would depend on the circumstance. Companies can also independently form company tactical groups. These are similar in concept, but one echelon below. So they're formed around a company and reinforced roughly in the same way, but one level down. In theory, a Russian brigade could form two to three combined arms battalion tactical groups, but in practice, they usually only deploy one. There are a number of reasons why Russia does tactical groups. First, they compensate for lower readiness, manpower and equipment shortages in brigades and shortages in professional soldiers and NCOs. Even if a brigade is significantly under strength, it can pool all of its professional soldiers and most of its equipment, supported by rear echelon conscripts and fire support, into one fully manned high readiness unit. Second, these smaller units are far more deployable and arguably more useful in limited and proxy wars Russia has been fighting recently, such as in Syria and Ukraine. Third, tactical groups do not require a massive reorganization in the battalion echelon to create combined arms units. Russian battalion level units are broadly similar in structure to what the Soviet army was fielding decades ago, which almost always reinforced them to make combined arms formations. Before we start, I just want to say that the sourcing situation on the new look companies is not the best, so take this with a grain of salt. Based on the least contradictory sources we've found from after the New Look reforms, it appears that all motor rifle companies now run roughly the same organization regardless of the type of vehicle. The main infantry carriers fielded by Russia are the BMP, BTR, and MTLBM. From what we can tell, the motor rifle company currently consists of a company headquarters and three motor rifle platoons with a total of 96 personnel and 10 infantry carriers. The company headquarters contains two elements mounted in one command vehicle. First is the company management, which consists of the company's command personnel. The company overall comes under the command of a captain, armed with an AK-74M rifle and Makarov pistol. They are assisted by a deputy company commander, usually ranking senior lieutenant, who is armed similarly. Then there's the senior company technician, who is in charge of vehicle maintenance and possibly armaments and reports directly to the company commander. They rank Praporshik, which is a rank title that comes from the Old Church Slavonic word Prapor, meaning banner, with a similar provenance of the ensign rank, which was originally an officer who carried the ensign or colors. Praporshiks are essentially warrant officers that are given technical roles above non-commissioned officers but below officers. As per the TONE, they're also usually armed with AK-74M rifles. Meanwhile, the company Sturshna is equivalent to an American First Sergeant or Commonwealth Company Sergeant Major. They typically rank either Storshina or Propershik. They're responsible for the discipline of all NCOs and enlisted men in the company, property accountability, the company storeroom, and record keeping, 
Also, if there are no officers in the company to take command, including platoon commanders, the company Starshina would do so. And lastly is the medical instructor, a senior sergeant, who's responsible for the medical care in the company. According to the TONE, the medical instructor is armed with an AKS-74U carbine, although presumably they could also be armed with an AK-74M rifle. Meanwhile, the management squad contains the company HQ's vehicle crew and some supporting personnel. The squad's commander ranks sergeant and also commands the vehicle crew. The gunner operator in the BMPs or machine gunner in the BTRs acts as the assistant vehicle commander, taking command of the vehicle if the vehicle commander dismounts. The company's HQ vehicle is driven by the senior driver mechanic, who ranks your freighter roughly equivalent to a lance corporal. The HQ is further supported by a radio telephone operator, most likely manning an R168-5 radio. The HQ is rounded out by a radar operator, who operates an SBR-5 man-portable battlefield surveillance radar. Company-level radars are a fairly novel and uniquely Russian thing. They have a utility in locating ground and air targets, classifying targets, directing precision fire, and providing an early warning. It can be mounted on support weapons like the PKP General Purpose Machine Gun, NSVS Heavy Machine Gun, and AGS-17 Grenade Launcher. Next, each motor rifle platoon consists of one platoon headquarters and three motor rifle squads mounted in three vehicles. The platoon headquarters consists of a platoon commander, ranking lieutenant, and armed with a Makarov pistol and AK-74M rifle. They also have an R168-0.5U radio to keep in contact with the company HQ and their squad commanders. They're assisted by the deputy platoon commander, who ranks senior sergeant and is armed with a rifle. The two ride in separate vehicles and act as vehicle commanders when mounted. Typically, when the platoon dismounts, the platoon commander dismounts, and his vehicle gunner takes over command of the vehicle. Meanwhile, the deputy platoon commander stays mounted and commands the mounted element, which is known as a Brennegruppe or armored group. This is the same as American practice, although unlike the Americans, Russian Brennegruppe are much more independent than the vehicles in American mechanized or motorized infantry units. Meanwhile, each motor rifle squad consists of nine men and one vehicle. They come under the overall command of a squad commander, who also acts as the vehicle commander in the platoon's vehicle without platoon leadership. He ranks sergeant and is armed with an AK-74M rifle. He's also meant to have an R168-0.1U radio to keep in touch with the platoon commander. The vehicle is further crewed by a gunner operator in BMPs or machine gunner in BTRs, as well as a driver mechanic, both privates. The squad commander dismounts with the rest of the squad, after which the gunner operator takes over command of the vehicle. This is because the gunner has a much better field of view when compared to the driver. The remainder of the squad are exclusively dismount infantry. When dismounted, the squad can form a fire group and a maneuver group. It consists of a PKP or PKM machine gunner with an assistant machine gunner who is armed with an AK-74M. The PKP seems to have replaced the RPK-74 as the squad automatic weapon in ground force units, although the RPK is still used in the VDV and naval infantry, possibly due to its weight, folding stock, and decreased risk of dirt ingress with a magazine feed. In addition, the group has a grenadier armed with an RPG-7V3 rocket-propelled grenade launcher and a carbine or rifle. The arming of the Grenadier with a secondary weapon is an advent of the 1990s, as prior during the Cold War, the Grenadier usually did not carry another weapon besides the RPG, although this likely varied in practice. The Grenadier is assisted by a rifleman, who carries three spare rockets in addition to the gunner's two or three. Meanwhile, the maneuver group is the squad's first assaulting element. It's led by the senior rifleman, a Yefreiter armed with an AK-74M rifle and GP series grenade launcher. As the name implies, they're the senior most riflemen with the most experience in the squad after the squad commander. The maneuver group further consists of a rifleman, a private also armed with an AK-74M rifle and grenade launcher. One of the riflemen in the platoon is a rifleman orderly, under the direction of the platoon commander and company medical instructor. These are essentially combat medics light or combat lifesavers typically allocated at one per platoon. Their core tasks include getting the wounded out of harm's way and protecting them, securing an airway, hemorrhage control, bandaging, administering anesthetic, and immobilizing fractures. They're equipped with a first aid bag that can treat the whole platoon.
Starting off with the marching order, a battalion tactical group contains several elements. As an example, a BTG column can be led by a motor rifle platoon acting as a recon patrol. They would most likely act as an early warning for the rest of the column. The patrol would be followed by the advance party, which would contain a motor rifle company, tank platoon, and mortar battery. In BTR battalions, it could also have a battalion anti-tank platoon. Unlike the forward patrol, the advance party is a combined arms combat element. The party would then be followed by the battalion HQ, accompanied by the signal platoon. If one was attached from brigade, an air defense platoon could follow, then followed by a tank company, minus the platoon in the advance party, the battalion grenade launcher platoon, a motor rifle company, minus the platoon allocated for the forward recon patrol, another motor rifle company, an attached artillery battalion, the battalion support platoon, and finally a reconnaissance element bringing up the rear. When deploying from the march into the attack, the battalion would deploy into three company columns, each headed by a tank platoon about 5 to 8 kilometers from the enemy front line. Rifle companies would then deploy into three platoon columns, 2 to 3 kilometers out. At least 600 meters out, the platoons would then transition into line formation for the attack. Infantry would dismount from their vehicles as close to enemy positions as reasonably possible. In the attack, a motor rifle battalion could attack in one echelon, with one attached tank company leading, followed by three motor rifle companies, and then the battalion HQ with direct fire support elements and indirect fire elements. Companies would usually be 3 to 600 meters apart from each other in this formation. All platoons from the first echelon companies would be online advancing towards enemy positions. The company headquarters would then be situated about 200 meters behind the leading edge of the attack. In this situation, the tank platoon would lead the line formation about 1 to 200 meters ahead of the infantry. Dismounted infantry would advance in line, either slightly in front of or in line with the infantry carriers, which would be spaced at intervals of 100 meters. Each squad has a rough frontage of 50 meters, making for a total platoon frontage of 300 meters. The platoon commander would most likely be somewhat behind the platoon, with the deputy platoon commander remaining mounted. Any attached weapons teams, such as AGS grenade launchers, would be located near the platoon commander to allot for the most effective control. Meanwhile, in a battalion defense in conjunction with a tank unit, two rifle companies will be forward, with one company acting as reserve occupying a second line of defense. With an attached tank company, two tank platoons can act in direct support of companies, while one tank platoon fills the gaps between the rifle companies up to one kilometer wide. There are a number of ways that the companies themselves can be oriented. Typically in the first echelon, all of the company's platoons would be online, occupying trenches and dug-in fighting positions. The company can cover a frontage of about 1 to 1.5 kilometers. Each platoon would have a frontage of about 400 meters, with up to a 300 meter gap in between the platoons. Such gaps could be covered by a tank, as previously stated, or by a weapon squad with an AGS-17. Platoons will be placed along likely avenues of enemy approach. Typically, a platoon from the battalion's second line companies would be in reserve for the first echelon companies in addition to the Brenne Gruppe. This mobile reserve would be able to counterattack against an enemy breakthrough when needed. Here, we see an example of a company defensive line with a recess in the middle to draw the enemy into a crossfire between the platoons on the flanks. One squad from the center platoon is deployed forward, roughly in line with the platoons on the flanks to trick the enemy into believing the defensive line is linear. Alternatively, a tank could occupy the recess, which would fall back to a prepared position once contact was made. Now going down to the platoon level, here we see a motor rifle platoon deployed in one echelon. This platoon occupies a depth of about 300 meters from the first trench line to the rear of the platoon's area of responsibility. Each squad can cover a frontage of about 100 meters, with up to 50 meter gaps between squads. The dismount squads in the trenches are immediately backed up by a vehicle in a fire support position, about 50 meters back from the front line, except for the first squad which houses a deputy platoon commander and commands from about 250 meters back. A line of mines, barbed wire, and natural obstacles would be in front of the first line of trenches. The platoon commander is dismounted behind the front line from a central position. Attached fire support, including automatic grenade launchers, would usually be deployed behind the front line near the command group, so the platoon can effectively control them. A platoon could also be deployed in two echelons, with two squads forward and a third squad in reserve about 1 to 200 meters behind the front line. 
When the company is reinforced with a tank platoon, the individual rifle platoon can be reinforced with one tank. This tank can occupy a number of prepared alternate firing positions, depending on how the situation develops. And now I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters, especially our producers. If you want to help grow the channel, get shout outs and videos and other perks like early access to videos and patron only chat on our Discord, consider becoming a patron at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.